Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. President Biden announced Tuesday that April 19th is his administration's new deadline for making all American adults eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccine. The previous deadline was May 1st. A majority of states have already opened up vaccinations to all adults. The president also said his administration is on track to administer 200 million vaccine doses by the end of his first 100 days in office. But Mr. Biden is also warning Americans to remain cautious and continue wearing masks and social distancing as some states see a rise in coronavirus infections. CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe starts our coverage. President Biden today doing everything he personally can to get people vaccinated. You want to hold my hand? <laughs> <laughs> and issuing a warning if Americans aren't vaccinated quickly enough. We're still in a life and death race against this virus. New variants of the virus are spreading and they're moving quickly. Cases are going back up. The president's announcement that April 19th is the new eligibility date for all adult Americans comes as many states have lifted COVID restrictions and cases are spiking among young people. The virus is spreading because we have too many people who've seen the end in sight, think we're at the finish line already. But let me be deadly earnest with you. We aren't. The U.S. is currently averaging about 3 million doses a day, up from a million in January. And 63 million people are now fully vaccinated. But Mr. Biden urged patience. We're not even halfway through vaccinating over 300 million Americans. This is going to take time. Vaccine hesitancy among some pockets of the population is a major concern for the administration. A recent study showed that 45 percent of white evangelical Christians said they won't get vaccinated. The pathway to ending the pandemic runs through the conservative evangelical church. Curtis Chang, who's trying to reverse the trend, said the faithful need to hear less from government officials and more from religious leaders. This is our moment to step up and actually say this is how we ought to think and act around the vaccine. And Ed O'Keefe joins me now from the White House. So, Ed, why did the White House decide to move up that deadline for all adults to be eligible to be vaccinated? Well, in part, Elaine, because as with some other deadlines that they've set or goals that they've been able to meet, the states were, in essence, already doing it, were already getting there. Many of them had said April 19th was now the date by which they believed they'd be able to have all adults in their states eligible to get a vaccine. It's important that it's just eligibility. It does not mean on the 19th or 20th you could walk into a pharmacy or a vaccination site in Idaho or Iowa or South Carolina and get yourself a shot. It just means you'll be on the list, and at some point after that, your state will be able to set a date. So they moved it uh, as vaccine supply is growing, as access to vaccination sites across the country are growing as well. And the administration believes it's another good sign of the forward momentum. But as the president pointed out today, we're still not to halfway to all Americans being at least partially or fully vaccinated. Uh, only about uh, an average of four million this past Saturday each day. It's going to take a while. And as you got to wait your four weeks or your three weeks between shots and then wait two weeks after that to be considered fully vaccinated, it's going to be a while. And, and as we heard in your piece that vaccine hesitancy is a concern for the administration, what steps are being taken to encourage more people to get their shots? Well, part of it, Elaine, is they're spending millions of dollars over at the Department of Health and Human Services to run an ad campaign that people may have seen already on their local news or even here on CBSN, encouraging people to go out and get their shots, encouraging them to find uh, or use websites to figure out the best location. Lots of cities and states are doing this as well. But this administration understands, as you heard in our piece, that the best spokespeople for this kind of work is not necessarily the president or a cabinet secretary or the press secretary. It's local officials, local leaders who can be compelled to speak out and encourage their neighbors, their coworkers, their parishioners to go get a vaccine. That kind of work is, is more difficult to do and to track from this perch, but it is ongoing. We know that administration officials have been in touch with business groups, religious leaders, other mayors and, and, and state officials across the country to encourage them to speak out and do whatever they can to boost those numbers. The evangelical skepticism that we talked about in our report uh, stems from a study that showed that among religious groups, whether it's white evangelicals as the ones we highlight or Catholics or Protestants, Jewish, whoever, 
they had the largest percentage of people saying that they're not necessarily going to get the vaccine. And a lot of it is rooted in, in sort of biblical teachings and concerns about how the vaccines were developed, whether they used stem cells or other technology or science that maybe runs uh, counter to religious beliefs. A lot of work being put into getting religious leaders to talk to their faithful and say, no, you know, if you have concerns, here's the information. But otherwise, this is part of what we have to do for the collective good. And Ed, I also want to ask you about the concept of vaccine passports. It's a topic that's drawing opposition from Republican lawmakers. Why is it causing controversy? And what is the White House saying? Not just Republican lawmakers, but increasingly Republican governors across the country who again today were saying that they're opposed to it. They may pass legislation banning any company or the federal government for trying to enforce them. Here at the White House, the Biden administration reiterated yet again today, there is no plan for a federal mandate requiring people to get any kind of vaccination certificate that would show that they got vaccinated. The administration, part of it at least, is working on general guidelines that might be used by companies or states and cities that opt to require them, uh, mostly to deal with privacy concerns, because there's an understanding that whether it's a large company, whether it's the federal government, there's going to be skepticism and opposition about either of those big entities holding your personal medical data. And that's what's driving a lot of the Republican concern, is that Big Brother or the federal government would somehow be tracking whether or not you got a shot and potentially discriminating against people who, for whatever reason, decide not to get one. So Florida was first in banning this. We've seen governors in Texas, Missouri, and other places say that they don't want them either. But again, the White House here at least says there will never be a federal mandate requiring them. Finally, Ed, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki was asked about the president's comments last week about the MLB All-Star game moving out of Georgia. President Biden was also asked Tuesday whether the Masters golf tournament should also be moved. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, the, the, the issue with moving the Masters, though, would be like moving the Kentucky Derby out of Kentucky. You can't quite call it that if you're moving it from mm. the facility where it is. And Augusta, Georgia, of course, has always hosted the Masters, a tradition unlike any other, as they say. Look, he said today it's up to the Masters organizers as to whether or not to hold the boycott uh, or consider rescheduling. Uh, and and he's, he's, he thinks it's reassuring that sports leagues, companies are speaking out against these laws. And he says basically the solution is for the states to rethink passing or even debating these kinds of proposals. At one point saying uh, it, it, the best way for Georgia to deal with this and other states is to, quote, smarten up, stop it. It shows you how strongly opposed he is to some of these Republican ideas. Remember, election law experts who've tracked, especially the Georgia legislation, say, look, on a whole, it's going to expand access to early voting across the state. The issue is it's shrinking the time spent on absentee ballot requests, the time between a general election and a runoff election, which could make it more difficult to, for people to apply for a mailed-in absentee ballot. It's reducing the number of drop boxes where you could leave your ballot if you can't mail it in or you don't want to walk it in. It's going to make changes to whether or not you can talk to people waiting in line and give them water if they're hitting, sitting under the blazing sun. In Texas, they're considering legislation that goes even farther. Republicans in both these states and in others like Arizona, where this is still being debated, and Florida say these are changes that need to be made in the wake of last November's elections, where there were concerns raised and where there's concern that, you know, too many people may be inappropriately, illegally accessing the ballot. Although, as we've said for years, there's no evidence of widespread fraud. Right. A point that we continue to make. Ed O'Keefe for us at the White House. Ed, thank you very much. Take care, Elaine.